Hey there guys, Headphones New here, back with a review of a movie I wanted to catch up on. Um, notably because at the time of watching it, it was a 10 part series, and um, at the time I didn't really think it was good, but as of this watching, my opinion has changed. So that movie is Stargate Origins Catherine. Um, it was previously a 10 part TV season, part of Stargate Command, that short lived app for all Stargate content. So. In summary, at the time of the show, I thought it was a, it had a good premise of what they wanted to do, but it was not executed very well. But watching it now, outside of the hype of the uh, Stargate Command service and the show, and watching it as a feature-length film as it's released um, currently, the show actually holds up a lot better than I remember it did when it first came out. So the movie is basically the tying together of the 10 episodes in a 104 minute film. Um, it serves as a prequel to the Stargate film and uh, elaboration of what of the Stargate found in Egypt that Daniel Jackson eventually helps get working again. Um, so as far as um, the movie is concerned, um, it deals with uh, Catherine and her father trying to uncover or figure out how to get the Stargate working, and then they have to deal with the uh, Nazi Germans um, who are also or who have figured out how to dial the gate one way, but they don't know how to get back. They don't know how about the dial home device. Granted, nobody knows about it, so there is that. But essentially, we have um, both sides trying to um, figure out how to get the gate working. Um, on the flip side, as far as the Gould are concerned and um, that race opposing as gods, we have the wife of Ra, um, Aset, who is the mother of the Harsesis, which we learn later on um, is the ultimate Gould child to um, hold um, all the knowledge of the Gould in one body and who can uncover the, or who can ask all the memories, something along those lines. So it's basically a super Gould. Um, Ra, by the end of the film, comes to learn of it and um, banishes a set. Um, but that that becomes a plot later in the movie, so that's kind of like the ultimate um, revelation and plot device for the film. Um, the film is notable for me is that in that we inter get introduced to a young um, Kasuf who's um, the mother, of, or sorry, the father of Daniel Jackson's wife in Stargate of Share. Um, and essentially we have a lot of retconning in the film, so Kat, um, Catherine's father gets taken against his will to through the Stargate, <coughs> and the part that kind of confused me was they kept talking about Nagara, which I want to assume, or I was kind of understanding that it was a town on Abydos, um, because why would Ra transport all the people off of the planet to another planet? Um, and it would kind of make it easy, as an easier explanation of how um, Daniel Jackson was able to get it working during his time. So for the purpose of my review, I'm going to assume that much. But essentially, Kasuf is just a citizen in the city on of Nagara in on Abydos. But because he knows about the events that happened, the Catherine's visit, um, the Germans, and all that happens, Ra wipes his memory, and or sorry, Aset wipes his memory, and reinstates him as the leader of the people on Abydos, so that's kind of how he gets his promotion. Um, and then the reason why Catherine doesn't remember anything of what happened is because Aset wipes her mind and um, her father's mind as a means and uh, replaces her memory to uh, re-uncover how to get the Stargate working. She doesn't leave them with the memories how to do it, but when they're ready, um, they're going to come back through the gate with a stronger team to take down Ra, which sets up the events of the Stargate film. So that's the uh, one bit of um, retconning. Um, the other bit is that um, Kasuv takes Catherine to the caves underneath the t city where the um, seven gate symbols are to get back to Earth. And we see a fully completed tablet that's not broken. And because Catherine wants the means of not letting the Germans are outside get it home or get to Earth to enslave the people. She breaks the um, bottom of the tablet, which Daniel Jackson later finds and um, doesn't know how to decipher in order to unlock the gate. So 
Catherine's idea worked, but not with a, or has a further lasting consequence consequence than she ever imagined. But she picks someone who's smart enough to figure out the symbol and understand what it is, and also the Abedonian people, whether it's through Kasu passing it along to through um, Share or Share figuring it out in the caves on her own and teaching it to Skara, her brother. Um, that's how Daniel Jackson ends up figuring it out that final symbol. But the breaking of the tablet is a um, important bit of retconning here, but it was a good retconning to kind of tie those pieces in together. Um, so some of the long-term effects of the plot of what I said did is that uh, she made Dr. Langford and Catherine forget the ancient Egyptians. So um, it's kind of how they explain why Catherine has that feeling that Daniel Jackson figured it out, but they don't really explain it in the Stargate film is because the origin, she forgets that she knew ancient Egyptian to begin with. Um, and then the forgetting of the events of, of what happened on Abydos. So while Catherine was there, it's kind of a convenient plot point in order to ensure that the events of, um, Stargate hold up and then later in SG-1 why she doesn't remember that they unlocked the Stargate to begin with is because she didn't remember unlocking it at all because of what I said did. Um, but overall the film holds up as far as a red or basically for me I took the perspective after watching it that assuming it's supposed to be a retcon of what happens in Stargate it's basically supposed to also fill in some of those pieces of the puzzle to provide more backstory on what um, amounts to a decent enough Stargate film so um, we get more backstory on Kasuf um, and we get more backstory on Ra and Aset uh, we get the um, we find out why that tablet was broken, um, and we get a, we get the bits and pieces of the uprising on Earth, but not too much of that information. And then we kind of understand the whole reason why the Harsisa's child was um, kind of considered blasphemous, and why one didn't exist prior to the events of the Harsisa's in Stargate SG One is because none of the ghoul system lords wanted one to exist to begin with. So. Overall, the movie for me holds up now a little bit better than it did before, so I'd probably give it about a 75%. The acting was a little bit on the cheesy side, but overall I found it a little bit better in this format as a single movie rather than a 10-minute episode um, season, just because by the time in the season TV season the um, action gets ramped up or they make any prog progress on the plot, the episode ends whereas here it's a continuation of the story so all the pieces fall into place and i like that um catherine had enough ancient egyptian knowledge to figure it out and they had the translator guy who i probably thought was my favorite character in the film um translating for everyone but also being respectful and all that and then catherine's boyfriend at the time who didn't make it and they don't remember what happened to him so um all in all a good movie and then it sets it up as to why the stargate was sitting um in a bunker which i want to imagine was probably some i don't know that that they said it was in cheyenne mountain but maybe it was placed there under security because someone knew something or because it was a relic of world war ii that they wanted to keep it secure or more secure than it had been um, is because the people who knew what to do or how to unlock its um, secrets and translate it didn't have any memory of it. And then the main German guy with his book who had the notes on how unlocking it was uh, left back on the planet. So if you're a Stargate completionist or want more Stargate films in your life, especially with the talk of another Stargate film potentially coming soon, then Stargate Origins is good enough Um it's enjoyable. It fills in some backstory. If you watch it first before watching the Stargate film, it makes the Stargate film that much better of a film. And then it also gives more backstory or more weight to Ra and um, why he was so angry with the humans being there and why he went all out and wanted to destroy him, why he had the confidence that he did in the Stargate film. Um, and it also had... Um, adds a little bit more weight to or backstory to the Harsisa's child later on when we see 
um, that story arc show up in SG-1, so um, a lot of bits and pieces all over the place, and they don't really go too far outside of the scope of the film, because SG-1 does expand a lot on the Stargate um, lore and stories and the network and races and all of that. Um, Stargate Origins Catherine focuses mostly on Catherine, but also only really focuses on the lore that we see in the Stargate film, aside from the Harsis' child, but that kind of sets up, that mostly served a purpose in this film of allowing Langford and, or Dr. Langford and Catherine to escape, but also the reason why Aset um, wiped their memories in order to ensure that um, they wouldn't remember what happened and also they couldn't speak up against her, but then also set up the idea that um, she was the one who gave Catherine the motivation, or not really motivation, but the drive to want to get the Stargate program going again so that someone can go back with a team that was strong enough to defeat Ra and actually follow through on that promise, kind of as her um, revenge after the fact, because she knew that if um, Ra found out about her and the Harcesis that um, everything would be over, and that's exactly what happened, because her trusted aide... Um, essentially backstabbed her in order to gain power in Ra's um, army. And then we get to see a little bit more of Ra's serpent gods, or not serpent gods, but his main guards show up as a good transition into that part of the Stargate film. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for past episodes our past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in to this particular review, and until next time.